Those who dare accuse black of not being a color are just as scientifically wrong as they are philosophically right. Welcome to the Night Vale Community College. My fellow students, today another insectoid species has just been discovered by Biology Bob, Professor of Biology. It has seven wings, 14 eyes, and a lot less than 300 legs. It might also be a normal three-winged bug with wings flapping too quickly to be counted. Once again, this amazing discovery has been credited to the mutant bug living in room 38. You know, that mysterious bug that every day mutates into another type of insect. Most times it's things that we already know, like an ant or a beetle or a necrogagon. But once in a blue, purple, or slightly sabia moon, it transforms into some new creature yet unknown and unclassified by man. Biologist Bob, professor of biology and the biology department, of course, then proceeded to classify it and get to know it a little better. Talk about its feelings, how its family's doing, and what it wants to be when it grows up. Despite their greatest efforts, however, little is known about the ever-changing creature. It is believed it came from the dog park, however, since it left a track. Not footsteps, since it's able to fly, but something different. A feeling, maybe. A deep, eerie feeling of solitude, angst, and despair. A feeling of defeat upon confrontation of the ultimate terrifying truth that no matter how many people might surround your daily routine, you are and always will be horribly, alarmingly alone. Or it might be the smell of onions. No one likes the smell of onions. Students, I would just like to remind you that there will be no English, Spanish, or ancient Sumerian chanting classes today, since Professor Stephen, responsible for the three disciplines, is on a secret mission today. As you know all too well, but should never ever acknowledge, Professor Stevens is a part-time member of the Sheriff's Secret Police. As you also know, but avoid out of politeness, and to avoid creating an awkward atmosphere, he cannot just use the cloning machine like everyone else at the school who has a busy schedule due to the fact that he is a ghost. And, as you all know, despite our best efforts and technological advances, ghosts cannot just be cloned on Thursdays. <sighs> so enjoy the free time, students, although remember, time is never really free, as there is a limited share given to each and every one of us that we should use wisely. For we know that what we do in the present will determine what we become in our future. And because every month we have to sacrifice a child to the great college clock to avoid its fury and complete obliteration of time itself, of course. But the moral lesson we can take from this isn't as interesting. And now, an advertisement from fellow student Ann Peters, you know the farmer's daughter from the marketing department, about her father's imaginary corn. Have you ever gotten hungry? Have you ever imagined how it would feel to get hungry? As of consequence, have you ever imagined how it would feel to eat? If you have, and I know you have, I can read your mind. You probably tried to imagine how food would taste. Except you weren't able to, because your imagination is just not that good. But don't worry though, my poor, uncreative friend, because someone has managed to do it for you. By John Peters, you know, the farmer's imaginary corn. The best imaginary corn in all acknowledgeable and comprehensible parts of Night Vale. Buy it now. Really, buy it now. This message contains a cryptographed spell that will make you suffer horribly unless and until 
you buy an unimaginable amount of imaginary corn. Do it, you poor souls. Do it. And now, students, I leave you with Jerry the Parrot. Down the city lights Downtown where the kids unite There's one person that might be alone It's just me and my headphones It's me and my headphones I listen Obedience I think your head's not right Please listen Obedience it's just me and my headphones tonight Oh, 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 you got me Oh, 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 but I don't owe you anything Oh, 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 you got me Oh, 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 but I don't owe you anything If you meet me, please don't cheer me up I'm a thistle, you're a buttercup And I don't care if I'm all alone It's just me and my headphones It's me and my headphones I listened Obedience I think your head's not right Please listen Obedience It's just me and my headphones tonight Students, students, can you hear me? As you might have noticed, I'm using that special frequency that only you, the students, can hear, not the teachers. As you know, this can only mean one of two things. And no, our teachers have not become werewolves today. Yes, my friends, tomorrow there will be a party. Yes, the cool kids from the popularity department are yet again throwing a party. Some people are saying that they're doing it way too often and that the parties are starting to become boring for being the same thing. But they must understand, as put by Anna Heron, stereotypical head of the popularity department. I know, right? It's like getting pretty boring, but like, there isn't just much to do here, you know? We can't even make rules for different days anymore because, you know, like, hello. We had to stop wearing pink since Wednesdays was cancelled. You know, everyone's just throwing parties. Like, it's what we do. We were cooler in high school, really. Indeed, they can't even text mean things about each other anymore. Not since cell phones were prohibited because of the incident. 
However, Caddy Coleman, the non-stereotypical head of the popularity department, the only department known to have two heads, as a homage to Miss Brittany, the first queen bee of our university, who was actually a two-headed bee, says that this party will be a little different. It will be a costume party. And it will be themed. No one knows what the theme is, and it will be revealed as a surprise in the middle of the party. And naturally, everyone who is not dressed according to the theme will be executed. There is also a special guest. The faceless old woman who secretly lives in your home. True, no one will be able to see if she's truly there, since she is always just out of your sight. But we will know. And you know what they say, knowing is half the brutal, merciless, bloody war that we have to fight every day just to get by. As you can see, the party will be pretty cool. Guys, let's give them one more chance, okay? We never know what might happen. No, seriously, we we'll never do. Even when it is happening, or already happened, we just can't get ourselves to understand it or describe it. It's actually pretty weird. Anyway party. Of course, only cool people are invited. That excludes dorks and obviously cyborgs. As we know, cyborgs are not and never will be cool. If you are not cool, by which I mean you have not been marked by the branding iron of coolness by the popularity department, nor have made the 12 hour rituals to sacrifice your soul for something as ridiculous and futile as the acceptance of some random people that you will probably never see again in a couple of years. Just proceed to ignore this message and wait for more instructions that may or may not come. Members of Department X are also not invited. Not because they're not cool enough, but because they do not need an invitation. If they want, they will enter and they will party. If such a thing happens, remember, do not approach them, do not attract their attention, and do not, I repeat, do not call any of them Carl because that would just be awkward, because none of them are named Carl. The party will be happening at the Unknown Center Annex, since no one ever uses it or knows why it exists. The time will be sent to you telepathically. The rules are as usual. No dorks, no cyborgs, definitely no cyborg dorks. Androids will be allowed with their Android identification card to make sure they're not undercover cyborgs. You cannot bring beer. Nonetheless, you will bring beer. Fatalities only after midnight. Chanting only in the chanting areas with appropriate measures. No drinking while teleporting. And do not take balloons to parties. We're not kids anymore. We should be more mature than that, for shame. Also, do not, under any circumstances whatsoever, bring onions. No one likes the smell of onions. And that is it. Party on. Students, an update from biologist Bob, professor of biology and the biology department. They would like to apologize. The new bug species was, in fact, not new at all. Its constant movement, plus the fact that biologist Bob, professor of biology, lost his glasses and he cannot see without those things, had let them believe that it was an unknown creature when in fact it was just a normal average fly. In fact, he had lost his glasses several weeks ago, and upon further inspection, it has been found out that the mutant bug was not a mutant bug after all. From day one, it has always been just a normal average fly. The biology department is profoundly ashamed, and a poll has just been opened for everyone to vote on what their punishments will be. I, however, will vote for no punishment at all. Listen, students, we all make mistakes. Even when we try our best, sometimes we just fail. Hard, miserably hard, almost hilariously hard. But failure helps us learn. After all, isn't that what we are here for? To learn? To be educated? To become better citizens for the community that we love so wholeheartedly? We go through the darkness in present day to become the light of days to come. And just like that, we evolve, we mature, we grow. 
May you remember that, fellow students, and good luck in your daily journey. Goodbye. Thank you for listening. The Night Vale College Radio is a fan podcast written by Leo Falcon in homage to the Commonplace Books podcast. Welcome to Night Vale by Joseph Fink and Jeffrey Craner. Please support their show. Host voice is Gabriela Robles. This mysterious voice in the credits is Emily Lombardi. The opening song is The Temporal Fields by Wald Fagali. Find out more at waldfagali.com. Jerry's song was Me and My Headphones by Cargo City. Find out more at cargocitymusic.com. Background music by Muji at music.tumblr.com. Want to know more about our podcast? Follow us at Tumblr at nightvillecollege.tumblr.com. We guarantee your Tumblr will not, I repeat, will not murder your neighbor's dog with a red wrench. Today's proverb, don't believe everything you see on TV. Don't believe everything you see. Don't believe everything. Don't believe. Don't.